Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. This is the show where we review the week's news in the world of quantum computing and its impacts on the world of cybersecurity, AI, and more. This week, with us to discuss a variety of topics are, as always, Brandon Dennis, our Director of Operations at QSecure. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Bill. And calling in from across the globe, Rebecca Crothammer, co-founder and chief product officer of QSecure. Rebecca, welcome. And where are you calling from? Thank you, Bill. I am currently in Dubai right now. I am uh, joining the World Economic Forum Global Futures Council on the quantum economy, where we are talking about what's happening in the next three years of quantum. Super exciting. So this week, we have stories on quantum computing, news from CERN, and our own Joey Lupo has an article in Dark Reading. Let's transition over and hear about those stories. So Brandon, apparently some Chinese scientists made uh, some claims about uh, record-breaking in quantum computing. Tell us about it. Yeah, we have a China breakthrough coming out of the news this week. Uh, headline says, a Chinese research team developed a photonic quantum computer series that has reportedly solved a complex mathematical problem in just one millionth of a second. Uh, that outperforms the fastest supercomputer by over 20 billion years. And this new record in boson sampling beats the last record set by a factor of one million. Uh, Becca, big numbers made my eyes get large. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, definitely big numbers. But if you have been following quantum, this probably sounds like deja vu, right? Um, we hear something like this in the news like once every month or so. Um, and what I would what I would say is, yes, it's awesome. It sets a record. It's a very specific record. Uh, and really the thing that, that I take away from this is it, it more than anything, it highlights the competitiveness um, and the importance of, of moving fast in quantum on the global stage. So um, what you know, what, what to take away from this is it's it's this problem called boson sampling. Um, it doesn't have a ton of real world applications, but it's something you can peg. Uh, the speed to. And so that's why we, we see this from China. They'll often come out, okay, this was a million times faster, a million times faster, a million times faster. Um, but uh, what you really need to be paying attention to, if, if you're trying to track how quantum is developing, it's, it's not qubits, it's not number of qubits, it's not how much faster a new quantum computer can, can beat out a supercomputer or even its predecessor. Uh, in the early days of quantum, that, that stuff doesn't matter as much. What you're really looking for is these use cases that you recognize. So it's when, when you start to see a quantum computer that can do uh, medical diagnostics faster, that can do things like portfolio optimization better, that's when you should get excited. So not to say that this isn't exciting. Uh, we are seeing quantum move faster and faster. But uh, I would say when you start to recognize the use case and the problem, that's when you start to pay attention. Excellent. And uh, I believe for our next story, it uh, we have some news out of CERN about bringing quantum computing to society and its impacts. Brandon, tell us about it. Yeah, directly from the CERN website, headline reads, bringing quantum computing to society. Uh, really found this article in interesting, Bill. It said, uh, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is renowned for its groundbreaking work in the field of particle physics and high energy particle accelerator experiments. This week, it is launching the Open Quantum Institute. This is a three-year program aimed at applying quantum computing resources and enterprise to projects aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and UBS will be the lead impact partner for funding. Becca, what are your thoughts on that? So this one is is short, sweet, and happy. Um, CERN does some really cool stuff when you hear like all these different particle names and, and exciting experiments coming out. This is actually uh, an example of where CERN is partnering with UBS, which is one of the world's largest banks. Um, so a really cool collaboration between research and uh, commercial to bring real applications to life over the next three years. Um, so I think two things are really important to take away from this. One, uh, near and dear to my heart, 
it's really focusing on quantum for good. So it's these, this idea of SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And so it's applications that push humanity forward. So very cool. Um, and they're real world applications, like we were talking about in the article before. It's stuff you recognize. So um, hopefully this means that in the next three years, we'll start to see really cool use cases coming out. Excellent. And for our final story, uh, a topic around crypto agility and orchestration, it turns out our old pal Joey Lupo has an article in Dark Reading. Tell us about it, Brandon. Joey Lupo. Good to see you pop up on the uh, research this week, my friend. I had your article here, Making the Case for Cryptographic Agility and Orchestration. Uh, from the article, our very own Joey Lupo was published in Dark Reading, explaining orchestrating crypto agility to the world. The National Institute of Standards and Technologies is working on PQC standardization, but the evolving landscape requires something called cryptographic agility to adapt to emerging threats and vulnerabilities. Becca, you live, breathe, eat, sleep crypto agility on a daily basis. Uh, please bestow your knowledge. Yes. Well, Joey's a genius. If you haven't read him, his stuff, you probably should. Um, but the the net net is that we're all talking about the quantum threat. Um, we know how to solve it. We've got these algorithms called quantum safe algorithms. Uh, but what Joey's talking about is that's not the end goal. The end goal of this uh, encryption migration cycle is actually something called cryptographic agility. And simply put, that is the ability to control. Say, I'm the I'm the person who controls my uh, my organization's uh, network. I have the ability to control my cryptography, what's being used where, and as quantum moves faster and faster, as AI moves faster and faster, and these algorithms start to uh, degrade faster and faster. It's all about this new era of being able to control and swap out your cryptography so you're never caught flat-footed. Well, that sounds like a great wrap up of the week of the week's news. Uh, you can find the links to the articles that we mentioned in the show notes. And if you want to join our mailing list for the weekly news summary, you can go to our LinkedIn page to join the newsletter mailing list. That's all for today's show. I'm your host, Bill Roth. And with us this week has been Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations. Thank you, Brandon. Absolute pleasure, Bill and Becca. Thank you, Bill. And Re yeah, and Rebecca Krautdammer calling us live from Dubai. Only the finest uh, in guests here on Last Week in Quantum. Thank you for making time for us, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Brandon. All right, folks, we'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum. <laughs>